Hello. Um, so in the last video, we looked at uh, reasons why there is damping in the apple in the skin. And then um, the next thing we want to look at is why there is dispersion. Uh, and we said we can look at dispersion from the, um, the argument of the complex amplification factor. And we found this equation 24, which is um, the argument of the amplification factor given by this. Uh, and now uh, we said that to be able to analyze it, we need to expand this, uh, apply a lemma, and then um, look at the resulting expression. Okay? So this lemma says that if Q is an expansion in powers of P of the form this, all right, where P is small, then the tan inverse of Q is expanded and is X given by this expression. So basically, if we can expand what is in brackets in equation 24, if we can expand this, Okay. to take this form, then basically we can compare this to that expansion and see that the tan inverse of whatever is in brackets is equal to something like this. And then we'll look at this thing. Okay. So um, you can try to prove it uh, as an exercise uh, dilemma. But uh, if you expand equation 24, okay, this is what you get. Expand the sign term, you get something like this. And then basically this is what is uh, the denominator of it, okay? So expand this guy as well, multiply by this, and you should end up with this expression, all right? And now if you compare what is in here to the lemma, all right, to uh, the Q, which is this, then you can make some deductions, right? You can compare the two and you can see that um, the tan inverse of this expanded thing is equal to equation 25. So, which means that the argument of the complex amplification factor of the upwind scheme is basically given by this expression here on the right hand side. Okay? Good. Now, note that if, uh, if mu is equal to 1, then this uh, cancels out, and what you are left with is the argument of um, lambda is equal to negative minus mu beta. Now, minus mu beta is the same as negative CK delta T, which is the natural phase change that we expect when we analyze the um, theoretical mode. So that is fine. But you see that if, if, uh, if mu is not equal to 1, then you have these times plus extra times that is causing dispersion in the way. So equation 25 basically demonstrates um, that apart from the case where mu is equal to 1, where the sim gives you an exact solution and the correct phase changes, uh, you have a relative phase error with, um, with order beta squared. So this factor here plus these other factors uh, is what is causing the dispersion in the upwind scheme. So we've seen that the up, upwind scheme can, scheme can be used to, um, to uh, solve numerically the, uh, the advection equation, but we notice that there is there is damping as well as dispersion going on, and we have given reasons why there is damping and dispersion using this uh, theoretical approach. That is what we've done so far. Okay? All right. So um, let's summarize this. Uh, the upwind scheme uh, has a truncation error of order one from the, um, um, it's generally of first order from the truncation error, I should say. Um, one of the drawbacks is that the damping can be very, very severe. You saw that in the movie, that um, once, you know, you start, you start um, the movie, starting from one, it just drops, zoom. So the damping can be very, very severe in the upwind scheme. Um, now, apart from the upwind scheme, which is first order accurate anyway, there are other schemes which are second order accurate. For instance, the Laxman drop, the leaf frog, the box method or Priceman box, the Makoma schemes uh, that you could use to um, to solve the advection equation. So uh, in the next uh, few slides, uh, we will look at the Laxman drop and the Leapfrog uh, schemes. Okay, so that's what we're going to look at. In the meantime, you could try to analyze equation 25 again. Um, I left out several details, so uh, try to derive it, fill in all the details. Okay. And then you understand how how um, the derivation was done, okay? And so we want to look at the Lax-Wendorf scheme next, and then we'll move on to the Lefroy scheme.
uh, as our final um, presentation. Okay. Now, the lux wendorf scheme is a second-order accurate scheme and is given by this expression here, okay, in patient 26, uh, where, again, the CFL number here is given by mu, which is C delta T over delta X. Uh, this is just a stencil for the scheme. It uses um, J minus 1, J and J plus 1, uh, and then N plus 1 time levels. Okay. How do you derive it? So all you do is that you expand uh, u, all right, uh, in the variable t. So you're going to expand this. If you expand this uh, Taylor series expansion, you get this delta t du dt plus, of course, delta t squared over two, and then the squared u dt squared plus, you know, all that delta t cubed times. Okay. Now the uh, adversion equation is given by this, which is it's a constant. Now, if you differentiate this with respect to time, you're going to get this expression here. Okay. We can interchange the x and t, and you have this, but the u dt is given by this, so you can plug that in, and you're going to have c squared d squared u dx squared. And so finally, u t t is given by c squared u x x. So we can replace the u dt by this expression with uh, u x. We can also replace u t t, that is this guy, by c squared u x x. So you plug those into equation 27, and now you are left with uh, derivatives of of x. Okay, you have we have gotten rid of the derivative with respect to time, and all of it is in with respect to x now. And so what you do next is just use central differences for the uh, first order in x, and then the second order in um, in x. And then if you do that, you get u to the second level to the um, level n plus 1 is equal to u, which is u at the time level n minus this guy. So u of x here is given by this for second derivative. u x x is given by this. Uh, you can rearrange this, okay? You just rewrite this and you have this. And then when you arrange this or rearrange it, you end up finally with, um, with equation 26, which is the uh, lax one drop scheme okay so the most important thing is starting from here once you start from here and expand in term t the rest is algebraic just manipulate these expressions and you end up with the last one drop scheme okay so of course like we do for other schemes once you have an expression like this you want to know whether the scheme is stable is unstable is unconditionally stable and all of the interesting things so of course then you can you can apply the Fourier uh, analysis to it okay so an exercise is to use a full analysis to show that the amplification factor for the lux window of scheme is given by this and from here you find the um the modulus squared and uh, you want to show that it's equal to this expression here now once you have this the b part want you to uh, find the values of v for which the scheme is stable and of course justify your answer it has to be stable, that is why we are, we are basically looking at looking at it as an alternative to the upward scheme. Alright? And then the second one is to consider this advection equation, but in this case your A or your C is variable, it's a function of X and T. So you want to derive a large one drop scheme for such an advection equation where this is no longer a constant. Alright? So take a look at that um, and, and see if you can do it. Alright? So this is basically the last one um, video I will do uh, for the hyperbolic equations. It's uh, about the leaf cross scheme. So I will. Um, I have a few minutes left on my time here, so I will do that in the next video, which is going to be short. We'll look at the leaf cross scheme. That will end. All right. So all the best. See you next. In the next video.